Now let's go ahead and ink this character and uh, same thing we're just going to try to make sure that there's a little bit of variation from the other types of lines we make. So his lines will be similar to hers, uh, you know, thick to thin uh, kind of effect. Uh, remember you can use line breaks here and there uh, to kind of make things appear more interesting or at least a little bit different from uh, surrounding areas. Let me kind of rotate and then also I'm working off another layer so you can see right there another thing that's helpful is if you can't get a, a clean enough line just shoot past the line and then connect it with the next line and it's hard because it actually hits the computer screen there to read but you basically erase back and you can get some really neat like um, chiseled corners basically by doing that and it's pretty quick uh, there's a lot of artists that I admire that I watch and I see that in their work a lot and it's kind of different than if you just go around the entire perimeter of this character and you keep going thick to thin, thick to thin, it'll get a little bit boring and repetitive. So just keep that in mind that you can kind of mix up that, uh, that effect where you draw over the lines, quickly erase back, and again, it gives you just a little bit different feel and vibe to the work. So you see I'm kind of adding in little lines. Uh, making sure not to make every line identical. You know, some are a little bit thicker, some are thinner. Uh, just kind of bouncing back and forth and trying to make the lines look and feel interesting uh, versus, again, doing this repetitive kind of overpass to the entire uh, work. Now, another thing you can do is you can really separate the character from the background by being strategic with your shadows. So it's line weight and shadows that basically allow you to do that. Uh, so for instance, you know, you see there's a bit of a shadow under the hand. Uh, I could even get this in right now before we get to the hand. Really doesn't matter. That's kind of the beauty of digital inking. You can kind of approach this in any way that you want. But just by adding these little bit of uh, tapered lines, we can show the separation and show how the hand is... Uh, you know, raised and away from the uh, computer surface here. So what I'll do is just get those in place. I could cross hatch whatever design I happen to see there. Go back to my translucent uh, brush, and I could even make this a little bit lighter so I could see exactly where the hand is. And I could erase that back, expose that hand, put that back to uh, full visibility, and I'll just go ahead and merge that in now. So. Actually, no let's, no, let's keep the character separated. I was thinking that was a different layer to merge into the character. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate this now. Like that. And notice, too, what I'm kind of thinking about or doing, implementing, is I'm going with, like, a steady speed into the next transition area. So what I mean by that is is for instance if I'm doing a segment to the finger then I'm going to pass from breaking point to breaking point of that segment so you could probably see if you're watching pretty closely how I'm doing this but I'm I'm making sure not to kind of stop in other areas I'm when I did the arm here I went from this point to this point in one pass so you know you can again you can probably see that throughout the work but what that does I think is it gives you a little bit more confident line. Uh, now if I was sculpting the line all the way through, I'm not saying you can't get good at it because I've definitely done that for parts of my work in different styles I may tend to do that. But if I want a cleaner, concise kind of line, then again, I'm thinking about this point and maybe past this point. And I'm gonna try to shoot that line out with one quick pull and maybe a couple attempts at it and that'll generally give me a nice clean line, something that I uh, I feel looks, uh, you know, has some good clarity to it anyways. See, and I really like this area, how the knee is a, a bit thicker, like that. And then maybe thinner here, and then it gets a bit wider as it comes down. And thinner, then wider. So I heard it referred to one time as keep the line moving. And I, I like that because it, it helps reinforce my thought process of, you know, you want to keep this energy to the lines. 
So if the lines are moving back and forth from thick to thin, you know, you're going to retain that energy. You're also going to start learning what works well. Because obviously, not just simply putting thick to thin lines everywhere is the entire battle. Like, there's certain areas where a thicker line makes more sense. Uh, the bottom of a shaded area, uh, something that you're trying to convey a larger fold, more depth. Um, but if you're constantly experimenting with thick to thin lines, then you're going to eventually pick up on that. And that's how you, again, determine your style. You're going to deem something, um, you know, kind of a, as a good choice within your work. And then eventually that just, it becomes an everyday occurrence until you latch onto something better. So like this, I might make this line heavier. So I'm kind of playing around with the thickness that I want to see there. And what that does, uh, or what I'm thinking anyways, is that makes this leg look like it's coming out towards can, uh, camera a bit more, out towards the viewer. So again, that's another reason to use thicker lines to convey foreshortening and depth and perspective. So you see I'm, a few of these I'm throwing in two lines here, just kind of trying to stylize it, shifting the angles as I go just a little bit incorporating some line breaks, some little dots. It's all just uh, style choices. You know, it's like whatever you see at the moment and you think might, uh, might look good, throw it in there, kind of test it. And you know, the beauty of digital is if we don't like it, we can easily get that out of there. You see those lines weren't in there at all, but I just feel like the knee needs to look a bit more rounded. So I'll just throw in a little, couple little rendering lines like that. And then obviously the shadow to the chair uh, is nice because it's going to, again, push the character out a little bit more, show a transition of, uh, of a little bit of depth. So by filling in the shadow, it makes the leg pop out a bit more. And that's really something you want to think about all the way through this scene. Probably could add more... Um, well placed shadows to reinforce what I'm talking about here. But I wanted this to appear a little bit more um, light and airy in the way that it was rendered uh, so that we could focus on line clarity a bit more. But shadows are a great way to push areas of the work around. So for instance, if we want this female character to look like she's away from the chair a bit more, adding a shadow right back here it's going to help us to, to do that. A little bit of a drop shadow there. So let's go ahead and wrap up right here. We're going to continue to render this character and talk about that. So with that, let's move on.